So it's the fourth time I start. Uh, let me just go one slide back to show the outline of my work. So at the, at the beginning, I will talk about nano indentation and scratch testing, as well as cohesive and adhesive cracks, uh, which occur during these two tests. Uh, this will be a general introduction. And after that, uh, we will talk about experiment versus uh, FEM modeling of these two types of cracking. And at the end, about modeling of scratch testing. So introduction to nano indentation. Nano indentation is a quite well established technique, approximately 30 years old, and compared to conventional hardness measurement, in this case, penetration depth versus load is measured continuously during the whole test. As a result, we obtain such curve. This is loading curve. And the same is measured during unloading curve. So based on these results, according to certain mathematical calculations, hardness of the coating or hardness of the measured material from these points is measured as a ratio between load versus contact surface and from the unloading curve uh, from the slope of the unloading curve uh, indentation models which is very close to the Young's models can be measured thus we can obtain a bit more data than from conventional hardness uh, measurement the devices which are necessary for that because of nano range are a bit more complex than conventional hardness measurements this is high and uh, nano indenter this is low and nano indenter but in principle, they provide the same data and the same information uh, from both of them. If we go, this was general introduction for mostly bulk materials. In the case of nano indentation in coated systems, and typically we use hard coating on softer substrate to somehow increase its uh, mechanical properties or tribological properties, the problem is that as soon as we have a thin coating, thin means one up to three or five microns, uh, hard coating on softer substrate, as soon as we put load on the indenter via coating, this load is transferred to the substrate because stiffness, which means Young's modulus of the coating is also much higher than that of the substrate. Thus, uh, we cannot measure only the response of the coating, but we always measure composite or summary response, both from the coating and from the substrate. Uh, to get true coatings hardness, this value has to be somehow extracted from the summary or composite or combined response of both coating and substrate. We principally cannot avoid the influence uh, because it's underneath of the indenter. However, there are certain possibilities. So let's look what happens if you have small indentation or penetration depths or displacement into surface depths and what happens if we go to larger depths. So if you have small depth, let's say in a uh, couple of nanometer range, the size of the stress field and plastic zone is confined only in the coating. Thus, the response will be mostly, obviously, elastic field will, does not have sharp contours and can penetrate somewhere uh, much farther. Um, but plastic field is confined only to the coating and the response is mostly from the coating. So, in that case, we are relatively secure. If we go, if we go to larger depths, in that case, plasticity, the zone of stresses exceeding yield strength of the yield stress of the substrate will penetrate deep into the substrate. We have a lot of plasticity even on the substrate, not only in the coating. And in that case, we have response from both coating and substrate. And what we measure, it's really composite hardness uh, and this is not uh, from where we can extract the data just about the coating. So 
uh, what to do in that case, how to get uh, the true data. Obviously, if we want to get the data about coating itself, our range of measurements is limited to very small penetration. That's somewhere only in this case. So the people introduced oh, that kind of experimental experience rule, which is called 10% rule, which suggests that uh, if we would like to suppress the substrate effect, the indentation should be performed or the data considered to be related only to the coating should be from the region less than 10% of the coating, coating uh, thickness. In general, this rule is not correct, but as a rule of thumb, thumb is acceptable and uh, can be used in a general case, despite there are certain exclusions. However, if you look back, there is no clear, clear uh, difference between area you can and you already shall not use for the determin determination of the hardness. So what to do in that case? Another method has been introduced. It's called continuous stiffness measurement or sinusoidal mode or whatever, depending on the company, where on the increase of the load, additional sinusoidal variation of the load is applied. So in that case, it, it means that for each maximum load we have within the amplitude, we can determine hardness and indentation modules. As a result, during the loading curve, we can get a number of hardness and indentation modulus values, depending on displacement into surface and so-called hardness depth profile can be produced which gives us additional information about a range where coating properties may be obtained more secular than from others. Here you can see that at small depths, which agrees with our previous, uh, previous uh, considerations, uh, correspond to uh, coating properties. Then there is a transition where both coating and uh, substrate are uh, combining and ultimately we go to the properties of the substrate itself at extremely large depths. So hardness depth profiles are very useful for uh, understanding where the true properties of the coating are uh, obtained. However, if we go to larger indents, uh, larger indentation depths, which uh, is usually in this region, which means that we have very large deformation of the substrate. There are strong plastic fields obtained both in the large plastic fields and plasticity obtained in the coating itself in this zone, as well as in the substrate. This is the yield stress limit shown here. So it means that inside there is a plastic deformation outside, we are only in the zone of uh, elastic deformation. So as soon as we have both plastic, plasticity and elasticity in, in both uh, coating and substrate, there will, be, there will be a lot of stresses generated around due to the deformation. And as a result, cracking can occur when critical stress intensity is a suitable location achieved. So typically, in this region, we measure the properties of the coating, and in this region, we can get information about the cracking uh, of the coating related to large deformation of the substrate and coating itself, obviously. What kind of coatings, or what's the classification of, of uh, cracking in uh, this case can we obtain? We can start with the cracking in the bulks. Typically, uh, they form depend on the contact. So in the case of ball contact, so called cone cracks are formed. However, in nano indentation, mostly uh, Berkovich or uh, Vickers indents, which are sharp, are used. And in that case, we have two different types of cracks. First are called radial, and there are three different types, either palm twist like this, uh, or they are median, 
of this type and relatively short cracks uh, at the top surface or a half penny which are again very similar in appearance from the top to the palm twist cracks but uh, the true form is a bit different. During unloading, uh, note that all these three types of cracks are perpendicular to the top surface where uh, indent is uh, obtained. In the case of unloading, new family of so-called lateral cracks, which is parallel to the top surface form uh, underneath the indenter. In the case of coating, so these are perpendicular and these are parallel to the surface. In the case of coatings on the substrate, again, uh, if the indenter is a spherical ball, we have conical cracks, which are, let's say, a bit less interesting in the current presentation. However, in the case of uh, coatings, uh, on hard, hard coatings on softer substrate, we can have lateral cracks, which are along the interface, uh, around the indent, and they are, in fact, very similar uh, to lateral cracks we discussed a bit earlier. They result in glamination or deadhesion uh, of the coating from the substrate, and that's why they call, in general, adhesive cracks. Then there is another family of coatings which form only within the coating itself. They are from roughly perpendicularly to the interface, and they result from little cracking of this coating. They are called through thickness cracks, or they can be called also cohesive cracks because, because they are just the result of little fracture across the coating thickness. So again, we have, uh, we have two, two different uh, families, adhesive cracks and cohesive cracks, uh, which we would like to talk about. This will be a main topic of current talk. Uh, however, we should also understand that uh, the appearance of this, this was very basic uh, classification of the coatings and also they strongly depend, the whole appearance depends on the loads which are applied and obviously with the deformation of the substrate resulting from the load. Uh, through thickness cracks, those cohesive cracks first appear at relatively small loads at much larger loads, uh, lateral cracks, or these uh, de-adhesion cracks due to the delamination in buckling, nearby uh, of the indents appear. And finally, if these two, two uh, cracks connect together, spallation or uh, delamination on a large scale can occur. So again, this is uh, depending also on the magnitude of the load applied and the stage when we are in with inundation. Here are the examples of such evolution. In the case of 200 nanometer silicon carbide on uh, 111 uh, silicon wafer, at relatively small loads, we can see radial cracks, which are here coming from the edges of the indent. When we increase the loads, besides growth of these radial cracks, we can see also so-called uh, frame cracks and uh, inside the indent and after further increase of the load or picture frame cracks and after further increase of the load besides the existing cracks also adhesive or lateral cracks and uh, large spanning area or delamination uh, occurs around the indent. However, this is not always exactly that way for example, in, in the case of uh, one micron thick tungsten carbide carbon on steel, uh, even at the same load, we see no radial cracks, no spallation, just picture frame cracks, or they are called also frame or circular, circumferential cracks within the coating. In my talk, I will focus on these uh, cracks form in the in this system. So anyway, we have adhesive and cohesive cracks. They might differ by origins and geometries, but these are two main uh, groups of cracks which are formed. This was during nano indentation. Let's go now to scratch testing. Short introduction to scratch testing. Scratch test is uh, a test when 
blunt indenter, typically a ball with a diameter around 200 microns, is pressed into the body and uh, moved across the sample with constant load or progressively increased load. The difference compared to uh, nano indentation is that the radius of the indenter is much larger. These balls, uh, 200 nanometers, 200 microns compared to, let's say, 20 to 50 nanometers in sharp Berkowitz indenter at the very beginning, and much higher maximum loads, which means that we have considerably larger contribution from deformation of the substrate. If you look on the details of the mechanisms involved in scratch testing, there are at least three main processes occurring simultaneously. First one is plastic deformation due to the plathing, because inventor stylus is penetrating deeper into the, into the system. There must be a plastic deformation around the indenter in front of indenter on sides of the indenter. Second principal process is a friction which is involved in the sliding between stylus and coating itself. And the third one, because of uh, stresses appearing due to the uh, plastic deformation of both coating and the substrate, there will be a fracture. So the first plastic deformation occurs in exactly the same way or very similar way as in the case of nano indentation, we can see that there is a lot of deformation in the substrate and in the coating due, due to uh, that process. Friction usually, so indeed, uh, the deformation results in the formation of uh, bentorus around the indent and formation of the groove uh, and bending along the sides of the of the groove. With regard to the friction, it results in the formation of different types of stresses in the vicinity, usually tensile and uh, compressive stresses or shear stresses in the contact zone. And finally, fracture as a result of the combination of plastic deformation of, of the whole system and stresses generated by uh, indentation. Uh, we obtain a family of different cracks and damage consisting of adhesive cracks, which are indicated in this area, or of cohesive cracks indicated in this area, and adhesive cracks, which are here. These cracks were already uh, classified in ASTM norm, and through thickness or cohesive cracks, might be of different types, depending on the geometry. Uh, at the smallest or lowest loads, they are called chevron, then arc tensile appear, uh, depending on the, on the geometry of the indenter. There, also, there are also Hertz cracks or conformal cracks. These are cohesive cracks analogous to what we saw during the implementation. In the case of larger loads and large deformation, we have adhesive cracks, which result in separation of the coating from the, from the substrate, and it might be in the form of buckling, wedging, recovery, spallation, and so on. Chipping is something in between when uh, the cracks start uh, in, the, in the coating, and then it's more toward the surface is separating. So it means it's mostly separated in the coating itself, but results in uh, not spallation, but separation of part of the coating from itself. So again, we can see that we have cohesive and adhesive cracks, very similar to that what nano uh, during nano indentation was observed, because in fact, nano indentation is also a scratch testing uh, with progressive load increase, however, with zero velocity. The main difference, as I already mentioned, is in geometry, because we have much larger uh, diameters, 
the geometry uh, will be slightly different and much more plastic deformation. Uh, the contribution of plasticity uh, is much more pronounced. And stress distribution we have because we have additional friction component added to the stress distribution. But generally, they should be very, very similar. How to model that? So we can use for explanation of this, uh, we can explain this map uh, showing uh, occurrence of damage in coating uh, substrate system depending on the hardness of the coating and hardness of the substrate. So at relatively small loads and wide range of substrate hardness values, plastic deformation would occur. However, only if uh, plastic deformation occur. So for this case, modeling can be performed using conventional finite element modeling. However, it does not give us a possibility to model cracking. So for that, let's say for cohesive cracking, we need certain extension, which uh, is called XFEM or extended FEM, where uh, a possibility for cracking is introduced. And for lateral cracks or cohesive cracks, uh, another module has to be used it is called cohesive zone model. Uh, and the combination of these conventional FEM, XFAM, and cohesive zone model give us full possibility to uh, describe cracking in both nano indentation and uh, scratch testing. So the aim of our work is both experimental and uh, theoretical study of adhesive and cohesive cracking during nano indentation and uh, scratch testing. All the work was done on approximately one micro thing uh, tungsten carbide hydrogen coating, which was produced by a hyperlinkless sputtering. It has relatively homogeneous structure, so we have no problems with some variations in that case. So let's go to the results. After nano indentation, we obtained experimental curves. You can see three experimental curves, which are shown here. They are quite reproducible, very nice. And we did uh, FEM, which uh, was the parameters of which was adjusted in such a way that it agrees well with the experiment. So based on this, this agreement, we can do then additional uh, modeling, including uh, other parameters. So agreement is quite nice. We are happy, and if we do these calculations for uh, until different depths, we can obtain also the hardness profile, which is shown in red, uh, and a hardness depth profile fairly well overlaps with uh, the experimental data we have from the measurement. The only difference is in this region, where because in, in modeling, we used ideally sharp tip, which is not the case in reality, because there is always such a blunting of the tip, and it it transforms into, into this uh, difference. But this is which is not considered in the consideration in, in the calculations or this part at very, very small loads is not typically considered. So anyway, we have very good agreement. Here is the visualization of stress distribution in the coating and uh, in the coating. We can see that the high stresses are at the interface or along the interface between the coating and the substrate. And then at the surface nearby the indenter. If we calculate it, or if we look on the evolution of these maximum stresses during the loading, we can see that at very small displacement into the surface, very small loads, the stress field, despite not, not clearly limited, is mostly within the coating. And if it's only elastic field, then the maximum stresses are within the range of, let's say, less than three GPA. As soon as uh, we get certain plastic deformation in the coating, and elastic field starts to penetrate more into the, into the substrate, this field, these maximum stresses start to increase. They are still within this area in the coating. And when last yield stress of the substrate is 
exceed it, then we see a decrease of maximum stresses at the interface. At the same time, please note that there is another high stresses formed nearby the indenter. Later, when the plasticity or when the stresses within the substrate are considerably larger and plastic field is much larger, the maximum stress is transferred from interface toward the bending bended area on the top surface of the coating nearby uh, indenter. If you look on the strains, so in this case we have only elastic strain, uh, here we have plastic, plasticity in the coating, so in this case we have that increase because plasticity field increases within the, within the coating. When the plastic deformation starts also in the substrate and substrate starts to deform, uh, we have that decrease. And in the last case, we can see that the plasticity in the substrate is of considerable size and we come to certain saturation of the maximum stresses. Obviously, fracture has to start somewhere in this area where the stresses are maximum. The formation of the maximum stresses in this region has to be a result of bending of the substrate coating at the same time. What kind, do we have any signs of cracking in this case? Really, we have, if you look more carefully on the previous uh, loading curves, at approximately 1290 nanometers depth, we can see certain changes in the, in the slope. These jumps here on the, on the curve are called pop-ins and they correspond to when we look on the load and recalculate it into the stress, it corresponds to the strength of the coating. So in this case, uh, fracture occurred. Indeed, this was at around 180, 190 uh, millimeter. If you look on the coating after interrupted in the test at 200 millinewton, we see such circular or frame cracks around the coating, around the coating, uh, around the indent in the coating. After increase of the load, there is a development of these codes, and after further increase, we can see that there is not one, but family of the coatings, of the cracks, uh, gradually forming during the uh, increase of the load and indentation depth. If we compare the distribution in the coating obtained experimentally with FEM distribution, you see that those cracks uh, form in the zone with the maximum stresses, which is quite obvious uh, reason for the formation of cracks. However, our FEM in this case was only conventional FEM, it was not able to show formation of the cracks. For that, we have introduced extended FEM, which assumes certain amount of energy, or fracture energy, which is necessary for, for the formation of cracks. To calculate, based on this model, we need two parameters. One is strength of the coating, and second is a critical separation distance or crack opening distance or let's say critical value up to which elements which are involved in the modeling in the mesh can be separated without without fracture as soon as this critical value is exceeded then crack propagates to another uh, module based on that we can model uh, cracking during FEM. So this is the result. After introduction of XFEM into evolution, we can see that after certain, after loading to certain value, we have high stresses at the interface, high stresses at the outer surface, and the first crack appeared uh, just in the zone outside of the contact zone. After further increase of the load and indentation depth, 
we have more cracks from, from this side and also cracks coming from this side. Why? Because there is a bending here and bending here. So at the highest tensile stress is resulting from bending on the outer surface and the inner surface uh, result in the formation of cracks as expected. And it continues uh, with the increase of the load and we obtain uh, several families of the cracks penetrating uh, into the coating. These are so co those uh, cohesive cracks mentioned at the very beginning. This agrees with the experimental observations. This is a thick cross section and we can see that there are at least two families of the cracks from first and then at larger depths uh, uh, again. This is the comparison of XFAN in 3D. Here we can see the cracks and here is the experimental result. So obviously um, the, the agreement is not absolute, but fairly, fairly well, especially in the first, uh, in the case of first cracks. <clears throat> there is, however, uh, one more advantage of this approach uh, we can use. From this value, we can obtain strength of the coating. If you know the strength, the only parameter to calculate fracture toughness of the coating would be that critical opening distance. So here we can use iteration. On the experimental curve, we see uh, there is the pop in here and based on different different critical opening distances and we use from one nanometer to 10 nanometers we can get these kinks at different zones so the best one was for the critical opening distance of eight nanometers which relatively well agreed uh, with the experiment and it corresponds to the fracture toughness on three and a half. This gives us a very good possibility to calculate fracture toughness in this case. How about adhesive cracking? In this case, we have to use cohesive zone model. The principle is exactly the same, just uh, instead of strength of the coating, we have to use uh, stiffness of the bond. Uh, which uh, connects, uh, which in fact means adhesion strength of the coating to the su substrate. And there is also critical separation distance exactly as in the previous case. So if we do that, uh, it means that we do not have infinite strength of the bond between coating and the substrate. After loading, we see two different differences compared to the earlier case. First of all, there is an opening of a distance between coating and the substrate. And second, first cracks appeared here, not in this area, despite this is also a zone with high stresses. The reason is that this release somehow released the maximum stresses here and not here. So that's why it appeared, the first crack appeared here and uh, Second crack appeared subsequently at the top surface. Further increase will result in a very similar family of the cracks coming from one side and from the other side, more from that side because there is no possibility for opening. And if we go further in that direction, we can see that we have here in this area adhesive cracking uh, because of bending of the coating and stretching of the boundary between coating and the substrate uh, in this zone, which is exactly what we uh, wanted to see. Additionally, after unloading, because there is a different recovery between uh, elastic and plastic deformation in the substrate and the coating, and different young moduli, obviously, uh, we have additional stresses in this area and additional adhesive cracks are formed there. So, we did both adhesive and cohesive cracking in the coating sy coated system during nanoimplantation. How about during scratching? Experimentally, during scratching, we obtained such scratches. And this is a zone where no cracks are observed. Then we see first crack, typically this chevron type. Then 
other types at larger larger loads. The lead is the uh, smallest load and a load is increasing in direction. What is measured is tangential force, which means friction force along the path, along the scratch distance. And at the same time, uh, you can measure penetration, penetration depth, acoustic signal, and so on and so on. Depending on this curve, if nothing happens, you can see just increase of the tangential force. After first cracks appear, uh, there are some jumps in this area, which can be seen here. Confocal microscopy show does that there is a lot of uh, plasticity involved in such tests. Here in this area, this corresponds to this area, we can see there is a lot of uh, grooves or pileups uh, along the groove and also a lot of uh, plasticity related to, uh, to groove formation. So because of significant amount of plastic deformation of the substrate, coating also has to deform dramatically and there is a possibility for the formation of cracks. If we model uh, deformation, so strains along the along the scratch path, uh, we can see that there is a lot of positive uh, displacement, uh, mostly along the path and in front of the path, possibly the highest, the largest in, in front, and negative, uh, compressive or depressions. Uh, under the indenter and behind the indenter. If you look on the, so it's, it fully agrees with the model which was described a bit earlier. If you look on the distribution of principal stresses, we have two different types of stresses, very high tensile stresses in the zone just below and under the indenter due to the pulling, and high compressive stresses uh, which are in front of the, of the indenter where the deformation is the highest uh, due to the buckling and spalling, uh, where the spalling and buckling of the coating can occur. If we introduced uh, XFAN into the model, then after certain distance, which means certain load and certain stress distribution, we can see that so-called chevron or angular cracks form uh, at the edges of the wall. The other increase of the scratch distance, which means also further increase of the loads and deformation and so on and so on, result in growth of these cracks or in, in larger cracks, which uh, can be called arc tensile according to ASTM or tensile or transfer semicircular uh, according to uh, different authors. So as a result, we can also see we can also see the comparison of the experimental data and uh, that of uh, modeled curve. If these jumps here are uh, cracking from XFAM, we can see cracks here, cracking here, 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 and here. The agreement is not absolute. It's fairly good, but not absolute because we didn't consider uh, uh, friction enough. And also there might be a coating strength variation between this case and this case. Despite that, the agreement seems to be quite reasonable and uh, definitely we can use it for, for uh, description of the understanding of the processes which uh, are Here is the comparison of experimental data and uh, model data in terms of crack appearance and crack formation. So we can see uh, there is a formation of chevron cracks and then the, these are cracks with the increase of the coating, uh, with the increase of the load and uh, scratch distance. Uh, despite, as I told, agreement is not, not exactly uh, the same. <clears throat> uh, it's fairly good uh, because we use the same parameters uh, as earlier, we can also calculate Fracture toughness, which is also three and a half, obviously, because we use the same formulas and the same parameters and in the non case. Thus, 
we can model both cohesive and uh, adhesive cracks during nano indentation and uh, cohesive cracks in uh, scratch testing uh, using combination of FEM, XFEM, and uh, CZM model. So let me conclude. So we were able to model successfully uh, cohesive cracks originating from top coating surface in the sinking zone and adhesive cracks of the coating substrate interface during nano indentation, as well as evolution and changes from chevron cracks to actin cycles during scratch testing. Uh, the method, the combination of uh, FEM uh, and uh, experiment is relatively suitable also or is capable of determining of uh, calculation of fracture toughness of these coatings. And the whole work can be used also uh, for early stages of the coating system, of where in the uh, coated systems. Generally, that's all. Thank you for your attention.